Hello and welcome to another live stream. My name is Anna Davis Court. I am a children's book illustrator. Welcome, welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm on the uh, different cam today again because we're going to be doing some painting. So we've got the nice camera on the top down view and the webcam on me because who wants to see all this? Come on. We've got uh, my niece Arlo's painting back here. We've got a corgi. We've got the, the strung up pom poms. Oh yeah, looking good, looking good. Oh, also this purple one. That is also done by Arlo. She is a prolific artist. And then we've got a little Oboya toy. Uh, we got some Pascal Campion. We got some Loon Flug down here. <laughs> so many fun things. Um, anyways, maybe I should change up the background every once in a while and see if you guys notice mm, the tests. <laughs> uh, excellent to see all of you guys in the chat. Rin gets a gold star for being first. Hello, hello. Uh, Alessandra with a hey and Kendall with the hello, hello. Kendall, I think you've like coined that now. It's it's all yours. <laughs> Jake Green says, hi, Anna Davis Court. <laughs> hello, Jake Green. How are you today? You having a good Wednesday? What day is it? I don't know. Time is an enigma. So let's just paint something fun and have a good time. Uh, Martha says, howdy. It feels like Tuesday lol. Agreed. Agreed. I don't. Well, I mean, it, it feels like someday other than now. That's that's what I'm getting. But uh, I'm having a hard time with all time. Uh, Jake says, I want to see all this, <laughs> all the small things in my background. <laughs> if you want to see everything up close, I will be uh, I, I'm so happy to show it to you. I could do like a little, I don't know, tour. One thing I do want to show you. Let's see if I can reach. Uh. Look at this, a little orb. It's it's my orb, I'm pondering it like a wizard. Mm. <laughs> this is actually a gift from my mother-in-law. It's a little bit dusty, but I collect glass floats and she said that this like reminded her of a very fancy glass float and so she got it for me and I love it, I love it dearly. So this is one of my many glass orb objects. <laughs> If you don't know about glass floats, they are, uh, they used to be used to keep nets afloat uh, in the like World War II ish days. And in the Pacific Ocean, there are just a bunch of them that have always washed up on shore ever since they were used. So they're genuine like glass balls that are hollow that come out of the ocean. And here, I'll show you one. Here's one of my guys. Ugh, oh, I love them. And they have these little like glass knobs where it was just kind of like made in a, a, a faster kind of like, they were manufacturing several of them. There's bubbles in the glass. They're all very unique. I love them so much. Uh, and it definitely comes from my days of growing up as a, a grandkid of Astorians and uh, going back to Astoria, if you've ever been there. It is a lovely coastal town full of history and charm and they have tons of floats. Uh, wait, oh, I have to show you one more. Anthony got this one for me when he went to Astoria a little bit ago. Uh, I think it was in an antique shop. Check that out. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. My grandparents had this one that was this big and it had ocean water in it. Like it was just a little bit full of water. It was so cool. Ugh, I wonder where that went. But anyways, they're beautiful. I love them. Uh, sometimes you can cut yourself on the edge, so be careful. <laughs> Anyways, that was a total random tangent. Uh, sorry, I'm looking this way because that's where the chat is. So this is me looking at you guys. <laughs> Jake says, that's so cool. D Ross, what's up, D? How are you? Says, uh, 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 please. And thank you. It's true. The magic words are very imp important. Rin says, it's a Tootsie Roll glass float. <laughs> Don't chew on it. And Dina, hey, what's up? How are you? Saying hello again, pretty glass. So many shapes, exactly. They come in all sorts of shapes, all sorts of sizes. Some of them are clear. Those ones I like, they're, they're like a little bit bluish. It just makes me think, oh, the sea. Any sea glass? Oh man, I love sea glass. Anyways, total tangents. Um, what I wanted to do today was paint. So let's check out the setup. Also, right before the stream started, I accidentally broke my mouse. So I had to get another mouse and now it feels all foreign and weird. <laughs> Anyways, um, this is a piece that I did as a study for another piece. <laughs> uh, remember last stream, I was doing uh, 
a gift for my mother. I was trying to make one. Well, after that, I did this and like this a lot more. And so I did the gift in this kind of style. Uh, this is with acrylic gouache with a uh, colored pencil on top and some graphite pencil too. I did like little stems to the flowers and stuff with just regular old pencil. Uh, if you want to see this more and close up, I have posted a TikTok of the making of it basically. So uh, check that out at Anna Davis Court. I thought we could try doing something like this again, but I was I was thinking of multiple options. So we've got we've got all the options. Um, I was thinking of doing another. This is an alpaca, or intended to be. You could also call it a llama. I don't know that there are a ton of physical differences. Although I have heard that alpacas are a little bit nicer in temperament. <laughs> I might be totally off on that, but that's just what I remember. Anyways, uh, so I was thinking of maybe doing another alpaca or maybe doing some other creature, but I really like this style and I almost wanted to make a more stylized version of the actual character here. And then uh, maybe sizing up this little uh, saddle <laughs> patterned blanket, whatever you want to call it on the back. So I was thinking maybe stylizing so that part of the alpaca is bigger. And so we could have like a lot more pattern and color opportunity on that. And then just try out different colors because obviously like alpacas come in all sorts of different colors, just like other animals. <laughs> They're all the options. Uh, Jake says it made a great little TikTok too. Oh, that was a cute little sentence. Great little TikTok too. <laughs> Check out Jake Green's newest TikTok slash reel where he makes tacos and it looks mouthwateringly delicious. And he also made, I think, was it 28 of them? So share with the class, maybe, Jake, next time. I need that. Also, whenever you make a cooking video, please show me you eating it because I need to see the satisfaction on your face of just like, Hum. it's part of it. Okay, it's part of it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Rin says, I think alpacas are supposed to be more gentle, where llamas are a bit more attitude. Attitude all the way. I agree. Robin says, hey, Robin, what's up? Uh, maybe alpacas don't mind if you call them llamas, but llamas get real defensive if you call them alpacas. <laughs> I didn't know there was like drama of the naming. <laughs> Uh, hello Adobe Live! Everybody who just joined, welcome, welcome. I'm Anna Davis Court, I'm a children's book illustrator, and we have just started today. Uh, this is an old painting and I'm going to just kind of use it as a little bit of a inspiration for our next one. We're going to be using these Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gouache. <laughs> I've been loving these. I'm actually already starting to run low on this brightest yellow. Uh, you always have to remember that when thinking about colors. You don't use all of these equally because if you use this red with this yellow in equal amounts, this red is all that will st like stay there. <laughs> it is so powerful compared to the yellow. So if you want to make something yellow, like say this grass, these greens, this is a little bit more of a, oh, sorry, you can't even see. This is a bit of more of a yellow green than the other one. Let's see what name did they give this one? It is emerald green. Ooh, Verde Esmeralda. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Uh, so yes, this emerald green mixed with this yellow. It takes so much more of this yellow than this green to get to this green. <laughs> One of these many greens, honestly. This is a lot of different ones. Partially because I love the look of the, the texture of it. Here, let me give you a close up. Like there's a lot of mark making in here. Oh, heck yeah. I would make whatever an alpaca sound is, but I don't know what that is. What does the alpaca say? I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> partially because I love the mark making and partially because I just didn't like the greens, so I kept going over them. <laughs> um, and also you can see in the close up that there is a very, very base layer that is like hot pink and it comes through every once in a while, especially around the edges of things meeting. I love that. I love it so much. So I think we'll do another under layer. Uh, what color should we use as a base layer? Do you guys think? Do you like that? Um, Rin says, quick, someone send Anna some of the brightest yellow. I need to accrue some, some, uh, what would you call them? Like niche colors? I see people every once in a while get a tube where they're like, oh, this is fluorescent pink. I have never had a fluorescent pink in my life. 
The pink that I made was literally the scarlet mixed with white. Titanium white. Because we are titanium. Okay, so. We should start with the blank page. Uh, do we want to do it in this is the question. I have some watercolor paper as well. Do, do, do. So we could do watercolor paper. I have bigger sheets than that. That's just like a little test sheet. Uh, Jake Green says, that was pretty close to BH. Oh my gosh, I'm an alpaca at heart. Who would have known? I know everything about alpacas and I love them. Um, the other thing is, I am kind of tempted to paint a fish today. I don't know why, but I do want to. So I think we're going to have two goals and I'm going to start sketching them now. So, uh, do we want to touch the back of this one? What if I cut it out someday and give it to somebody? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this is my alpaca sketching stage, by the way. This is kind of the layout that I ended up with for my mom's present. Uh, it is still a work in progress. I need to finish it, but I'm waiting to give myself a little bit of time to forget what it looks like and come back to it. <laughs> I'm literally hiding it in a drawer so I don't see it. Um, I think that that is one of the biggest ways to come back to a piece and feel like you know what you want to fix about it is just giving it a break. So yeah, let's sketch on this page, not intending to uh, paint on it yet. So uh, idea number one, let's talk about alpacas. So we can do all sorts of different what do you call it? Uh, proportions and such. I love their little floof legs. We could do a very tall neck, but with a tiny head. You're like, Meh. <laughs> and then some tall ears. I love that. But making the uh, body bigger gives obviously that big opportunity for like a, a blanket of sorts or whatever. I'm going to call them blankets just so I stop stuttering over myself. Beep. Uh, by the way, today I was supposed to do something totally different with the stream. I'm doing this just because I felt like it uh, much more. But the thing that I was supposed to do was um, I was going to make the assets for Friday's pro tips. By the way, I'm going to be on pro tips on Friday. I'm going to be showing off the soft light tool, three different use cases for it. So if you're ever curious about how to use the soft light blend mode, I will be using that and showing you how I like to use it. Uh, so check that out. And then also I was, I was going to make the asset. So with soft light, it usually goes best over something else. It's not just like a, oh, it's its own layer and that's fine. It's more like a, a layer on top of other layers <laughs> that affects them. That's what blend modes do usually. So, uh, I was going to make some pretty things to add soft light to in the next stream. And I just didn't feel like it at all today. I don't know why. Um, hopefully I'll feel like doing it tomorrow because I need to do it before the stream on Friday. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that was the idea. Also, whenever I give alpacas like a, here's the like face. Wow. What a great face. Whenever I give them like bouffant hair, I think of the character in Animal Crossing that does the DIY stuff. What's his name? I can't remember. I really like him because I love, I love customizing furniture and things. Oh my gosh. But yeah, he's basically got like two little floofs of little bouffant hair. So good. That's how I know I'm on the right track is if my aesthetic overlaps with Animal Crossing. I'm on the right track, baby. Uh, so this could be an entire blanket, like just a big one over the whole back. That would be fun. I do love creating patterns on things. I have to say there's something about it. You know, we used to do that a lot more in these uh, sketchbooks that Julia made me. Let's see if we have any in here. Oh yeah. See these guys. So I could use this and put it over the back of the alpaca. You never, you know, it's like old stuff coming in new. It's, it's coming in hot. <laughs> Cyrus, that's the name. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Cyrus, I was blanking. Uh, Dina says, oh, the one's nose is cute and the fluffy hair. Oh, yes. It's all so cute. Jake says, do what you feel. Uh, and I love that little piggy with her snoot in the grass. Yes. Uh, that one is duplicated in painting form. Although I have to say, I don't think it turned out as cute as this yet. I can still paint over it and do it again. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Piggies are fun. Maybe I should do a pig with a little thing. Here, let's see. 
So if we have a little piggy, and they, they could have their snoot in the grass and they could not, but they could have a little blanket on their back. Uh, the blanket, or sorry, the, the pig that I made for my mom's piece, I actually gave a little bandana that I gave the same pattern as the, this guy. The, the blanket on this matches the bandana on the pig. And then also there's a goose with little goslings following after it. And it's wearing a, a hat with that same pattern on it. And then it's uh, two sheep with little bows around their necks with the same pattern on it. So it's as if a farmhand or someone, or maybe the animals themselves, maybe they are able to sew. <laughs> they got a hold of this like fabric and they all have things made from it. And I love that idea. Also, it just makes the piece a little fun continuity wise where it's like oh yes all of it kind of goes together and there's little spots of blue throughout the piece i like it anyways enough bragging <laughs> uh let's see <laughs> robin says um pigs in a blanket of course oh my gosh i didn't even think about that pigs in a blanket Woo -hoo. should we just do a a little little peggy not sure Maybe this is my redemption art, because, like, as I said, it's not as cute in the painting as I want it to be um, yet. So maybe this will be my learning experience. Sorry, I have to. I have to make the noises of the animals. This is contractually obligated. Okay. Contract with who? Shh. Don't ask those questions, okay? All right, so I've got Piggy, and then and then I want to draw a fish, and not just any fish. I think it's Arowana, Arowana. They're so cool, and the music's not again. Spotify, I swear, has just upped its advertisement rate to like every song. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, so um, Arowana, Arowana. Is that how it is? Yes, those fish. Oh my gosh, they're like big old betas. They're awesome. Uh, so I wanted to kind of paint one. Maybe going back in space a little bit. Ooh, they have that body that just is all fish-like, you know? It could be cool. <laughs> and this is a fish that you can catch in Animal Crossing. And when I caught it, I swear to you guys, my entire brain lit up. It was just the right moment it was great it, it felt great and then when i put it in the museum and i saw it in its, it's habitat and it's gigantic and i'm just like oh, yes yes okay so uh what i was thinking is like if we could see a little bit of the depth of it but this is all experimental so we're just gonna try stuff out and see if we like it beep bop boop and maybe doing it this way doesn't look as much like the fish, so got to make sure that it captures the the essence of wetness. <laughs> Wait, what was it? The essence of water is wetness. The essence, or the something of wetness is beauty. I can't remember anymore. I used to be able to quote everything from Zoolander, and no longer. It's been such a long time. It's been a long time. I'm sure you guys will tell me. Because you're all mermaids. Mermen. Mermen. <laughs> hey, Glowing Eyes says hi, Anna, over on YouTube. Hello. And also, Art of Bora. Hello. Waving. <laughs> Lovely to see you guys. Oh, and I can't, I can't fail to mention Canadian Pulse. Hello, Canadian Pulse. Thank you so much for sticking it out with us on YouTube as well. <laughs> Uh, Jake says, I don't know if you said redemption arc or redemption art, but both are apt. I think all of the above. Yes. <laughs> I remember seeing them in the pond at D the Denver Zoo when I was a kid and thinking I could fit inside that fish. You've seen them in real life. <sighs> Heavy breathing. <laughs> That's uh, one of my nieces. She's two years old. She, uh, whenever she gets really excited about something, she just starts breathing really heavily. And I love it. She's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I was taking her down to the pool and she was like, ah, ah, ah. I love it. Oh, Jake says, moisture is the, okay, here's the, qu the, qu the quote. 
<clears throat> Moisture is the essence of wetness, and wetness is the essence of beauty. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much, Jake. You just replayed that in my mind. And now I got the black lung pop. Oh! Man, it's been forever. It's been a long time. <laughs> what are we doing? Drawing? Okay, that's what we do. So, yeah. Not loving it as much as I should. Uh, Halil says hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. Arawana. I might just do a boring straight up sideways. Because I feel like their shape is just so celebrated in the sideways. Like, their profile is striking. Mana mana. Uh, arawana. Mana mana. Okay, so the bottom one's a little bit broader along the edge, and then this guy's a little bit oh, stinky. And then this one is like a fan, so it's like Wah. And then, and then, there's a little guy. Whoop! And then how do you make them feel big? I feel like they have to be in proportion to their scales, or maybe, perhaps, I put littler fish around, where it's just like, oh, tiny little guys. Little, little friends swimming around the big friend, you know? And then we've got a big blushy cheek. And then a little eye. Another thing about, yeah, they're showing scales with scales. <laughs> Fish scales. Okay, sorry. Scale with animals is their eye proportion to their body. This in nature is usually true. The smaller the eye, the bigger the creature. The bigger the eye, the smaller the creature in proportion to its body. Uh, so like a mouse, its eyes are like... <laughs> on its little body and then like a blue whale it's like body Hi. you know you get what I'm putting down okay yeah yeah I think that would be really fun especially playing with their scales because their scales are gorgeous so what we can do is maybe lay down a base gradient of going from one color to another as it goes back and then once that has dried, we go over it with like little dots of darkness or a darker version of the color possibly to denote the scales. And then we get that color gradient underneath. And hopefully if we have thin enough paint on top, that can also inform the over color. Uh, and then we have separate colors for the fins and the cheeky, cheeky bugger. And then the eye. One who has seen the eye. Um, and then it looks like their belly can be also a little bit of a different color. So all the way down here, I might keep it slightly lighter or a different color altogether. And then we could use pencils. Yeah, we could use pencils over it, obviously, for like the, uh, the fin stripes and such, all that stuff. But I'm also questioning, should I do the scales in colored pencil? That could be cool. You know, everything's an experiment. Why not try both? Por que no las dos? In fact, let's get to it. I know that we can do it. Oh, I just punched my glasses. Okay. My glasses. Can't see without my glasses. So, uh, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Hua! I kind of want to start. Do I want to start here or here? They're basically the same size. Why do you even care, Anna? Uh, let's start, let's start with this. I'm making decisions left and right. You can't stop me. Um, okay. So laying down a base color, we should start with, I'm going to put that right there. You see everything? You see it? This is my makeshift palette today. Uh, I had a palette where it was just the lid of Parmesan cheese, apparently. Um, <laughs> and so I didn't want the old paint to lift up into the new paint. Sometimes that happens. It becomes like little flecks in there and I hate that. So I put down, uh, I made sourdough today and some of the parchment paper, I just tore off the edge of it. So reuse, reduce, recycle. Uh, okay, let's do this. I'm going to use this to put down the wash. The wash for a primarily blue piece, and I like the idea of the fish being somewhat red and blackish, because that's one of my favorite color schemes in the pictures. I think we could do yellow as the backsplash. Let's try this yellow oxide, because I have more of it. <laughs> that's how I decide creative things. I have it, so use it. Okay. Jake said something about a good idea. 
uh, 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 Robin said something good. Let's see. Robin says, hmm, yeah, do you add bird for scale for an underwater scene? Add bird for scale. Why not? <laughs> bird for scale, apparently turtle for scale. A little baby turtle. Tur turtles can be super tiny, so maybe not. Oh, I love it all. Underwater bird. Wah! <laughs> Kendall says, I miss making sourdough, been way too hot to bake. Oh my gosh, I feel you. Because it was way too hot to bake and I still baked. <laughs> I'm insane. Uh, but yeah, the the baking process is not a forgiving one for heat. And we have a new portable air conditioner this year that I love, love, love. That made it possible to bear the heat. And I feel like I gave it a workout, you know? But sometimes it's worth it for bread. So by sometimes, I mean all the time. Let's get down to bread making. Do do do. Ch -ch do do. Hoo -ah! I can just use all of it. Yeah. Did they send me sourdough? Because I asked for one. Okay. As that dries, should we do an alpaca? Yeah, let's do it. This is how I roll. All right, I want to put down another um, pink base for the alpaca. Probably more. Mm, probably more. Okay. I don't mind if some of the yellow mixes with this. It's totally fine. You just got to watch out for those colors that you really don't want to mix. That's all you care about. Look at that pink. Hot dang! I said hot dang. This is why I love having multiple ideas at once. You can do multiple paintings at once and you don't have to wait for stuff to dry. <laughs> Rin says, lurking a little, need to take care of things. You take care of things and I hope you take care of them well. I hope they take care of you. <laughs> take her out back. Kendall says, I put mine in the fridge and it'll stay there until it gets cool. Wait, what? are you talking about you could also do one of those baby fresh that hang around baby fish 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 those little they're, they're remoras is that correct is my brain remembering things i don't know i love the first dab of paint on here oh it's so rich <laughs> and uh, paints do react differently when they're layered versus just straight on the paper. So just keep that in mind if you're wanting to do this. And yes, it may look like I'm being a bit rough because I am. It's my prerogative. Okay. I don't have to fill every little gap here. It's fine. It's fine. I just want to try to get a little bit of coverage on everything. But not like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a wash underneath everything else. So if a little white comes through, if a little pink comes through, it's good. Okay. So look at that texture. Mm. We've got our fish and I might even do a third fish. What if I did... I'm curious. I just go with the flow, man. Go with the flow that you know. It's a thing. Alright, now. Maybe a little bit of that pink will mix in here and it'll become kind of like a light purpley. No, it's just a blue. Which is fine. I am happy with blue. I was thinking... I mean, most of the time when I use washes underneath my work, it's, oh, wow, <laughs> came out from the brush. Um, it is to create a complementary kind of relationship with the colors that are used in the painting painting. Uh, but for this one, I wanted to just try out if we did an underpainting of blue, how would that change compared to the yellow? So yellow obviously is going to be very different from the other colors that we're putting on. Uh, blue is going to be very similar, so I, I wonder just how that'll turn out. I'm going to use a little bit more blue. Beep. Beep. 
I'll tell you something though. I didn't know that at first that these uh, paints, I'll tell you the, the horrible thing that I thought they were. So these paints, you see, I like click off the top and it's got this little squeezy. I thought that they only opened down here. Oh God, <laughs> I almost just dropped it everywhere. Uh, they only unscrewed. And so I was using a palette knife to get it out of here and put it on my palette. And I was sad. <laughs> My whole life was sad because of that. And then one day Anthony comes over. And he's like, oh. I was like, what? What? <laughs> so, yeah. That changed my life for the better. Explore your paints. Know them inside and out. It's almost like that's important. Doesn't matter if it's the exact same uh, blue. It's much more important just to get it down. Beep, beep, beep. There we go. Now this is the most opaque. But I also think it's more important for this one because it is kind of like informing the color. It's not going to be just a wash that I go uh, over with other paints. It's going to be like the paint. Does that make sense? It's the water. <laughs> Hey, JTM says hello on YouTube. Hello and welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Robin says it's an interesting design choice. <laughs> well, how it goes, I suppose. <laughs> uh, also, I'm going to sketch over these paints. That's something I do whenever I do a wash of something. Uh, I sketch over it because I've sketched under it before and I lost the paint or lost the sketch. It's a bit damp still. This one's probably dry. Oh, it's got one wet part in the corner. That's fine. So thinking back to our mega alpaca, that's what I'm going to do on this one. So can you guys see? Yeah. Okay, cool. Beep. Uh, I think I'll go mostly like a big rectangle as the big shape. So I'm going to go with like... Should it be facing right or left? Which do you guys think? <laughs> uh, Ray says, maybe I missed it, but is the palette paper leftover parchment paper from baking sourdough? If so, genius. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, Ray, hey, what's up? Saying to Robin, very cool. I, I uh, have just been recycling mine. Time to reuse instead. It's whatever you deem good. <laughs> A good use of your parchment paper. I always reuse mine a million times in the oven to save my baking trays. Whenever we have something in the oven, we have parchment paper in use. So uh, it definitely gets like 10 lives out of it. But also, uh, hey, why not 11? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with facing right. Just to be different from the other guy. I think, right? He was left. Yeah, he's a lefty. Now righty. You guys cannot even see this. Huh? <laughs> That's okay. You'll see it eventually. And go even more extreme. Yeah. All right. So when we have this alpaca, what is the color of this alpaca versus the other one? And we can have pattern on them too. They could have spots or something. That'd be pretty cute. What if we did a black and white one? Does that here? Let me look up black and white alpaca. Yeah, I'll just look up alpaca and see alpaca. Oh, there we go. Images. Looks like a lot of white, brown, cream. Uh, some of them have a spot on their back, it looks like. Which would be mostly covered up by the blanket anyways. Uh, but there is one. Oh, they say llama versus alpaca. It looks like the llama is much taller. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, somebody put a unicorn on one. <laughs> Cute. I love it. Uh, I'm thinking white. Ooh, we could do black as well. Oh, that's such a cute one. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay. Okay. I'm getting some ideas. What if we did white on the whole like imagine a whole white body but then towards the top of everything like the top of the head and the top of the back it's got brown and that kind of comes down into the white i think that would be really cool maybe we could do it with colored pencils so we start with all white and then the colored pencils do the gradiating work i think that could work 
But first, should we do the green? That's the real question. I think we should do the green first. Wait, should we do the green first? So if we do white, white is hard to get super, super opaque unless you have a lot of it on your brush. Uh, and so if we do that over like green, say the green tucks in a little bit too tight and then we're like, oh, we got to paint over that. Then we paint it over with white. However, if we paint white first and the white tucks over a little bit too much, then we can paint over it with green much easier. So I think white first. I think we'll stick with the same brush, which is always annoying because then I have to wash it like what? <laughs> Come on. One of these days I'm going to graduate to being a cool kid where they use um, two jars of water and it's going to be like one is to wash the brush and one is to add water to the paint. Oh my gosh. That's like a five head move. I'm not there yet. Oh, I'm not there yet. Oh, I am not there yet. I'm going to add just a touch of the yellow oxide. Just a touch. Oh, what? What in the? Oh. We're gonna use more white, so don't worry if I put too much. I say to myself. <laughs> All right, there we've got like a nice cream color. Ooh, look at that cream! Oh, beautiful. Okay, now you're gonna be able to see the shape I do. So I'm not going to paint where the towel. I was gonna say the blanket is. <laughs> not a towel. It's a blanket. Uh. I'm just going to paint around it. Look at this hefty body. This is a great body. You've got those shapes. I'm gonna move the head just ever so slightly. Yeah, this, this is weird. Okay, there we go. Oh, we're half a head there. Oh, living on that prayer. Can you guys see? I ask as if you're in the room and can tell me yes or no. And again, with white, it is hard to get it completely opaque, so I might do multiple layers. That's just a possibility. And it's not a bad possibility, it just is. Is anybody painting along with me, by the way? I would love to know. And if you are, there is a paint along channel in the Discord. So you can join that and show off your awesome work. There we go. Okay. I don't like this neck as much as I want to. Hmm, we'll figure it out. And then like little leggies. Should we do the little poofs? I like the poofs, honestly. Poof, poof. Poofity poof, 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 poofity poof. This one's much more shapey than the previous one, which I am into. I dig it. Okay. Excellent, excellent. Good work, everyone. Whew, that was a lot of work. <laughs> uh, let's see. Kendall says, I'm painting in fresco. We'll share later. I love to hear it. Robin says, I'm doing an under sketch at the moment, but yes, love it. Martha says, digital paint along. Woohoo! Oh, I love it. It's like we're in a studio together. Uh, Robin says, I love the white to brown gradient. Yes, they're absolutely beautiful. And hopefully we can make that beauty come to life on here. Uh, let's see. And Rin saying, feel free to come hang out with us on the Discord. Absolutely. There is a link to the Discord in the chat. Uh, or not in the chat, whatever you call it. The description. And also above the chat if you would like to join. Please feel free. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just go over the ears a little bit more. Do, do, do. Uh, what was the other thing I wanted to do? Okay, so grass after this, but also should we bounce to the next one? Wow, watercolor paper really absorbs water. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? That's crazy. Um, okay, let's go for a little bit of green. A little bit of la 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 la. A little bit of green. Also, we've got this handy dandy spray. It says rose water, but I promise you it's only filled with water. Uh, <laughs> and I spray the palette to make sure it does not dry up. 
like a desert rose. <laughs> yep, I'm definitely running low on this uh, primary yellow. It's one of the primaries, I need it. I need to uh, probably stock up, like go to the art store and get some. I went to the art store last week. So now I'm getting all the emails like, hey, do you want stuff? I'm like, yes, I do. Could you give it me for free? Oh, I want all the art things, but also money. Okay, there we go. Just a little bit of white, not too much. Still, in my opinion, needs more yellow. Maybe we go for the yellow oxide. Let's just see. Yellow oxide, the real big difference with this is it mellows out the color, which is also sometimes a good thing. Uh, see how that green, I don't know if you can see it as much, but yeah, like saturated on that edge where I haven't mixed it and then a little desaturated there. So good, good things to know about your paint. And this is all just learned through experience of using it. Beep, 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 Okay. And then sometimes I do like to add something like a little bit of red to the greens. Uh, I think I'll do like I did before, just a few different layers of different greens. So we can use that green and keep adding to it a few different colors. Sorry, I'm making the focus go everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, painting is so fun. All right, y'all, this is your, your calling, okay? If you have ever wondered whether you should try out traditional painting, I just, I tell you now, this is the sign. Yes, you do want to try it. It's so satisfying. I wanna scrape up just a little bit to act like it's a little bit of grass coming up from the bottom. I don't mind if everything's not completely covered uh, because the pink is there for a reason to have that meeting point of the white and the green have a little bit of pink in between there that's kind of the purpose and that's also why i picked this brush because it's a little bit bigger than is comfortable <laughs> to get into every nook and cranny so it kind of forces me to either go this way or that way with my brush bowls and that means that there are little chunks of like curve that get missed so it's fun. My phone went boop, boop. Who do you think it is? What do you think it is? It's probably an email from the art store saying, hey, we have sales going on. Please, please take it off our shelves. Like I would. Also, hey, if you want to support my art habits of uh, buying new art supplies, I have a Patreon. Feel free to subscribe. <laughs> Thank you to all who have subscribed also. It really makes me buy new paints. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is all possible because of you. <laughs> okay, you get out of here. It's not your time yet. Okay. Now it's dangerous because everything's wet. No, nope, that's not enough paint. And also the paint, of course, like globs to the uh, the front of the end of the brush. It's on its, uh, it's collecting around the hips of the brush. <laughs> Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I really like having an edge, like see that plastic edge? I can just kind of it off so that it's not so glomped. Not so glomped. Then I can use that paint on the end of the brush. See? Yeah, yeah, that's where I want it. <laughs> ah! Finger to the paint. Zwoop. Zwoop. Shoop, shoop. This is also an opportunity to uh, create shape. If you want to cut around something, you can really define what shape it is. Or not. Just depends. Loverly. Oh, I'm so happy with it. This is going to be a lovely base to draw on top of with the uh, colored pencils. Anthony sent me a picture of cart or uh, what do you call it? Sidewalk chalk. You guys want to see? So this one says frogs, frogs. <laughs> and then this one is an axolotl. Of course he knew I would love this. <laughs> it 
It's perfect. <laughs> Anthony Jackson's in the chat saying there's always art sales going on. Keep an eye out. Uh, you know the best, Anthony Jackson. It's true. Jake says, how is Anthony doing? It's been a while. Uh, he's doing absolutely lovely. He's walking around taking pictures of sidewalk art. <laughs> so he's good. Uh, he's probably going to be taking a bit of a break from the streams, but we we love him to do that. Whatever he wants to do, he get to do. So, beep. But I also, obviously, whenever he wants to be here, he is welcome to be here. But also, he's got a lot of work going on right now, so no pressures. Oh, yeah. Here. Mixing in a little bit of red. Just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit in love with you. If only you're a little bit. A little bit. Do you guys know that song by Likey Lee? Alright. Uh, I want it to be a little bit darker. Let's add the tiniest bit of Viridian Hue. The tiniest little bloop. Oh yeah, that's dark. That is dark and good. Oh, not good. It's quite cool. So I'm just trying to make vertical marks to kind of denote that this is grass as a background. Also, one of my favorite things to do with all kinds of plant life is make sure that it's not just green, that there are a lot of different colors in here. So one of the things that I added in the bigger piece. I can't remember if I added it with the previous. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, oh, sorry, you can't see. I added that um, yellow, what is it called? Yellow oxide. Yeah, this guy. Just pure, uh, no mixing onto the, the green. And I think that that's a really cool uh, move for grass specifically because grass there's plenty of yellow grasses out there. I mean, they come in all colors, really, if you want to. But um, they have a lot of yellow grasses out there. So adding the yellow in, to me, just creates not only more depth, but gives it more of a grassy feel that I love. Oh my gosh, mark making is so much fun. So satisfying, too. It's just like, mm. Also, this is kind of dry brushing. Uh, which means that there's a little bit less paint on the brush than usual, and it's fun. <laughs> uh, Jake says those sidewalk arts are great. Send him our love. I do. I like it. <laughs> uh, Gandalf cameo. <laughs> it's quite cool. Robin says, if anything, we need to embrace more yellow grass and rewilding yards. That is a wonderful sentiment. Yes. Uh, yards of grass are doing nothing for the environment, basically, uh, and actively keeping the wildlife out of it, basically. Not creating homes for things like our native pollinators, like bees. And if you guys don't know, there's a big thing about um, monarch butterflies right now. They eat, I think it's like exclusively a plant called milkweed. And so uh, a lot of gardeners are planting native milkweeds just for the uh, monarch butterflies because their populations are going down. So, if you have the ability to, please plant some milkweed for your for your butterfly friends, because they're also pollinators and they're also just beings that deserve to live and not be snuffed out because people want yards. <laughs> All right, I popped out a little bit of that yellow oxide. I'm going to just zoop, 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 and go to town. You know what I mean? Just zoop, zoop, zoop. You could just like let it kind of organically choose where it wants to go. Or you can be controlling and be like, oh, that was the wrong spot. <laughs> I choose to be a little bit more loosey goosey with it, but it's, it's an active choice. Also, if there's any spot where you're like, ah, oh, this isn't my favorite spot, then that's where you add it for surezies. I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Wheels on the bus go. <laughs> yeah, and then I want just a touch over here. Zoop, 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 zoop. So much fun! Ah, ah, I love it. Okay. <sighs> All right, so now that we've got this, we can choose our blanket color. What kind of blanket color do we want? Hmm, 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 hmm. Alpaca. <laughs> um, 
Jake says, I try to let the yard do its thing, but when the dogs get lost in the plants, it's time for a trim. Well, that is very true. I mean, it, it does not have to be like crazy taken over. It's just the idea of not having a full on just grass field <laughs> of like mode cared for grass. A lot of yards in America seem to look like that and it's not necessary. Uh, Kendall says the cow people don't like uh, milkweed, sadly. It's deadly poison to cows, but butterflies. Oh, man, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, their plants are diverse and weird. <laughs> so who knows what they're going to do. Uh, but yeah, that is it's good to know that uh, not around cows. I guess we don't really have many cows in this area. Well, once you get out, I, one of the beautiful spots uh, or parts of being in the Portland area is the zoning. If you are in, like, say, a suburban area like I am, you can drive for 20, maybe just like 20 or 40 minutes, like in that range to find fully like wild or rural areas. And I love that. I love that so much. Especially uh, if you're into hiking, there are so many spots where you can go hike. It's amazing. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Okay, so for the color of this guy, I kind of want it. Mm, should I go orange or red? I kind of want it orange. Let's go orange. All right, really washing this brush out because it's full of green, which is kind of the enemy of red and blue. I mean, red and uh, yellow, sorry. There we go. Kind of clean. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start with our scarlet because I know I want that as my red. Oh wait, we've already got a little scarlet. Okay, and we don't need a ton for this. So let's see what mixing the scarlet and the uh, yellow oxide make, just for experimentation's sake. Okay, so that, that's the mix. Again, I was telling you earlier that the yellow is not as powerful as the red, so I'm gonna try mixing it over here just to see. Hmm, this is more of a like, what would you call that? Yeah, okay, that's getting to a nice orange. It was, at first it was looking very just like a fall, like brownish orange, which I don't mind. It just was it the orange I had in mind? I don't know. Now I just have this orange and that's what I'm going for. I'm going for it. Everybody hold hands, find your buddy. I'm going for it. Whoa. Oh, whoops, kind of overdrew my bounds there, but that's okay. Whoa, I stuck to the green. Stick it to the green, yeah. Oh, I mean, not not Jake, sorry. Didn't mean you, <laughs> meant the color. Uh, okay, so, woohoo, okay, cool, I like that. I'm thinking on top of it, it will be very nice to get some other colors going as well. Uh, there is the possibility that I'll actually paint some of the pattern on top. Usually I just use uh, colored pencils. However, the thing about this is uh, that it is kind of dark. And so when using the colored pencils over it, I might want a lighter color to show up kind of opaquely again. So uh, in that case, I will use my handy dandy fine liner pen or pen what <laughs> brush so that I can get there and uh, get some details going anyways that's not important right now what is important is fish I want to pop on over to the fish to see what we're doing we haven't even drawn them yet I'm gonna spray the paints just to make sure they don't go dry too fast uh, that is another thing to keep in mind with uh, acrylic gouache the acrylic part of it makes it so it cures when it dries. So just be very mindful of that when using it. Okay, I'm gonna bring out my sketches once again. Okay, cool. I think I'll go this way. Arwana. It's right like that. Now we've got the fan tail at the end. I'm a big fan of it. And then the broader fin underneath and then the little skipper up here and then the tiny little skipper down here. Then we've got the eyeball and the blushy. And then little babies. Maybe a turtle. I'm gonna put up my hair, it's getting too hot. Uh, <laughs> Jake says lol. 
at something, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Robin says, Ugh, I miss hiking so bad. I just can't do it in this heat anymore. Tried the one day it was over 100, and after 30 minutes was like, yep, we're done. That's a smart move, because, yeah, it is, yep, we're done. All over that. <laughs> you cannot hike in 100 plus. I have tried it in Southern Oregon. It was not fun. That was also the trip where I thought that um, I may have touched poison oak. So then I couldn't touch anyone or anything else on the trip. And so it was just like the, or, you know, on the hike itself. Um, turned out I didn't uh, at all, but it was still, you know, worth it to be safe for others. And it was just one of those like, ugh, kind of times. <laughs> like how many ways could this go wrong? Ugh. Okay, since we know that the fish is going to be kind of red, I think we could actually use this orange that we did for the alpaca and then have the gradient be from orange to, uh, to red. I think that would be really cool. Well, I know I want the blushy to be red, so I guess the orange will be the back portion. Something like here. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, something like this. It's a totally different experience painting on this paper versus the other one, which I want to embrace by giving it a little bit of a uh, texture right there. I think that's really cool. All right, here, adding more of the red. Oh yeah, look at that red. You guys can see that, right? Hopefully, not blocking everything. And I don't mind if we miss some spots. Again, that's why we have the wash down there. And then just total red face. Whoop. Whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. The tiniest little dregs of scarlet. I'm using them. There we go. Okay, cool. And I want to kind of zhuzh it just a little bit down here. Zhoop, zhoop. Awesome. Oh, it's looking good. Uh, uh, the fins, we can make slightly darker red. What if we use this? We haven't used it yet. Uh, the primary red. Let's try that out. Instead of, instead of Scarletti, I'm going to use some primary red. Come on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You can do it. I believe in you. Sorry, it's being a little stubborn. Okay, we got a little bit out. Might need to use like a little toothpick and zhuzh that through just to make sure it's not stuck on something. Advertisements? No, poo poo on you. All right. <laughs> uh, Dina says, I know someone who's allergic to mangoes and I wonder. Wait, what? Oh, Jake says, I learned that touching poison oak slash poison ivy can make you allergic to mangoes. Are you kidding? That is evil. That is evil. The heck, poison oak slash ivy. I hate you. <laughs> Jeez. Mangoes are delicious. That's so sad. I feel bad for anyone who's allergic to them now. Oh, this is a lovely red. Okay, so here we go. Zwoop. I keep thinking like, oh, is this the wrong uh, plan that I had for the colors and everything? I'm like, you know what? If it was, I can do it again at any point. I can just do it again. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. We definitely need more of this uh, primary red. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Don't burst. That's all I'm afraid of is like it going. <laughs> oh, I'm getting it. It's happening. It's working. It's working. Okay. There we go. Now that's the gloopy nonsense I was dreaming of. Gloopy, 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 gloopy. I want that gloopy, gloopy painting. And see, I switched to the smaller brush for this and everything. Oh, it's so different on the watercolor paper. Just soaks up the paint like nobody's business. But it also leaves that lovely, like, dry brush texture, so I'm not totally mad at it. Zoop. Something like that. No salt and salt and, and then like the little, the little cheeky guy down here. 
Oh, speaking of cheeky, should we make the... Um, yeah, I think so. We're going to use this as the blushy. I think that was my plan for it. When I talked through it earlier. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> I don't. Oh, no. Blushy, blushy. Okay, cute. Cute, cute, cute. I like you. I like you. Okay, cool. So, uh, let's see here. It's not blue at all. Maybe I'll do like a blue wash over it or something. I wonder how that works. After it dries, it cures. So I should be able to do a wash without completely washing <laughs> it away. You get it? You get it? You get it? I'm funny. Okay. And then... Uh, the little, little babies could be... Let's just do a little red too. Because I'm lazy. <laughs> That's the real reason. Oh, no. I did a page full of these little guys where it was just kind of like, I don't know, these like shapey that like they read as quote unquote fish, but they're not like really anything except for like a Y, I guess. And I, um, where was that? Actually, I think it was in, is it in this guy? Yeah, this one. Boom. Uh, and I really enjoyed doing this. I think especially because afterward I used a little pink uh, colored pencil and put in some pink ones. And that just, I don't know, for some reason brought it to life. Makes me so happy. Um, and oh yeah, here. Closer, you can see all like the texture and stuff of putting colored pencil over the paint. Oh, it's so much fun. And I believe I used the white gel pens from Rin. Rin actually gave them to me to make the little... Um, circle eye thingies yeah yeah look at that yeah oh oh let's do our third and final start to a painting i know i'm going crazy i could just like i don't know paint everything right now <laughs> oh jake says love those fishy thank you uh dina says wow the more you know you know this is um exactly why I love the chat is everybody has like these different knowledges and experiences that overlap so much that we all learn together. Like I had no idea that milkweed was poisonous to cows and now we're learning that poison ivy and, uh, is it both of them poison ivy or just, uh, poison oak? I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, it can make you possibly allergic to mangoes, which is insane. Jake says, yeah, the chemical that makes you have a reaction to poison ivy is also this uh, in the skin of mangoes but it's usually such a small amount that your body won't react to it okay so if it's just the skin then you have somebody else cut you the mango maybe perhaps uh jake says but the poison ivy interaction conditions your body to be more sensitive to it that's so sad kendall says eh, my mother was allergic to poison ivy on top of the normal reaction and allergic to the meds they gave her poor thing that is so unfortunate i'm so sorry for your mom kendall kendall says yeah that was not a fun summer for my madre Ugh, can you imagine a whole summer of just like i'm having reactions ah that's so sad uh i'm so sorry for her all right, let's go for another arowana. This one's gonna be a little chubbier, cause that's what I like. And then, zoop, and then zoop, and then zoop. A little dip, dip, and then beep. <laughs> Are you keeping up with all the the sound effects? Uh, I kind of want this one to have like little plants that's between. I think that would be really fun. Like little little seaweed guys. And some of them, like this this one probably will be the one that goes in front, and then there are other ones that go behind. Cute. I'm not exactly sure what their habitat is. I think they're kind of like a pond dweller, right? Jake, that's what you said, right? You saw one in a pond. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, then, then we get this lovely, like story of where it comes from which is muy bueno i make sure you can stay wet let us dive in with a little more red maybe we do this one pink 
I'm into that. I can go for that. Bit of a different pink because we're using primary red instead of scarlet. Oh yeah, it's much more rosy pink instead of the salmon. Clearly salmon. But if we mix it with some of the orange, whoa. Maybe that's the gradation. Now nah, we're losing it a little bit. It's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go for, I think I'll paint over the whole thing. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Whoa, hello, Alaska. I don't need to know. Okay. Pointy little nose there you got. Ugh, so much fun. And then the fins and the cheeky are gonna be, let's see, we got some leftover scarlet here. It's kind of mixing on the paper, which is silly. Might want more scarlet, maybe let it dry a little bit. <laughs> Don't you be giving me guff now, Scarlet. You were so good. All right, we can do the fins because they're not painted yet. Oh, yeah, I should have remembered. I was going to mix all these colors with the uh, blue so that they're a little bit more informed by the, uh, the water color. You get it? You get it? watercolor uh this looks like it's cured a little bit so some of it is flaking up which is really annoying but that's okay i guess it all is all a little bit more informed by the blue than the other one just because it's on a blue background so it's gonna show through a little bit more sorry i'm painting off the page again all right there we go that's him for now we're gonna put him aside and come back to our no drama alpaca <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say llama, but then I remembered. All right, so uh, what do we want to do for this guy? Honestly, for a base painting, I could almost call it good. Uh, what do I want to do before that? Probably add some flowers. What if we did some white flowers? Because he's white and it would like kind of, I don't know, use that same color callback a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. All right, should they be stereotypical, just like a bunch of little white, you know, burst flower like that? Or should it be like a tulipy kind of shape? We'll see, or maybe just like little dots. Uh, Jake says, yeah, it was a duck pond. They're apparently commonly found in rivers, lakes, ponds, river basins, and even flooded forests. Flooded forests, that's so cool. Uh, and Jake says, in South America, Asia, Australia, and India. So that totally reminds me of Ponyo when the entire island that they live on is flooded and then the fish dinosaurs are all swimming around. So that, in my mind, is probably why I love Arowana so much. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just do dots. I think I'll just have like a little doo -doo -doo speckling of little flowers around. We can always do another color of flower if we want another shape. But I think this is cute. Cute. Do, 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 do. And then we can add little uh, stems or clover or and or all sorts of stuff. You know? We can just go crazy with it. It's like stippling but with a brush. Just go whoa 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 whoa. When was the last guy the time you guys stippled something? Tell me about that. Did your hand hurt? If you don't know what stippling is, it's a technique of drawing where you just do dots. It's drawing with dots. Sorry, I was off camera again. Oh, you guys gotta tell me when I do that. Just have like a little shock collar on me and be like, you're off camera. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Well. Yeah. 
All right, trying to find the balance here of like what's too much, what's not enough. I think we're good. I think. Maybe like a little bit coming out from behind. Cute. Oh, I love it. Okay. Time for pencil, I think, honestly. Um, yeah. We are powerful. Let's do a little bit more leg in here, just to make sure that it's reading on par with the other leg. Hopefully it's not too, what do you call it? Like it's leaning, not too much. <laughs> These are the powers of digital art. You can just like warp it into place or whatever. Not so much with this. That's why sketching is so important. And man, how I want to just rock it through it <laughs> instead of sketching for a while. Uh, Robin says, oh, I saw a crazy sti a stipple pen the other day. It was like a tattoo pen. That is very cool. And I can see that being very useful for uh, 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 actual stipple pieces. Like I can't imagine if you're, if you made your life through stipple artwork, you would have to have something like that. I would just like take five pencils and just like tape them together. <laughs> Jake says, I love watching your process. Oh, I'm so gr glad. Jake says, 10th grade, I think, for the last time you stippled. Wow. All right, maybe it's time to do it again. <laughs> Oops, we missed monkey paw time. Stipplers. <laughs> Okay, so uh, monkey paws is a stretch, and I would love to encourage you to do it with me. So what we're going to do is go through the stages, the steps, the mantra. <laughs> so for monkey paws, we're going to start with our hands straight in front of ourselves, our fingers to the sky, and our palms away. Then curl our fingers into what we call a monkey paw. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Great job. <laughs> Second pose, we put our fingers to the ground, palms towards ourselves, and then curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Good job. Third pose, we put our fingers to the sky, palms towards ourselves, and curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Wait, did I do it wrong? Yeah, like this, then like this. Wait, the, uh, uh. There we go. Okay, so third pose is we put our fingers down and palms away, curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. And then fourth pose, we put our fingers up, palms towards ourselves, and then curl them in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <sighs> so embarrassed, so so sad about myself that I messed it up. It's okay. So uh, let's do that again. First pose, second pose, third pose, fourth pose. Good job, everybody. Woo woo. <laughs> Jake is typing ooh ooh ah ah, which means he's not doing the stretch. <laughs> now, now he is because guilt, right? Right, Jake? You're doing it? Okay, ooh ooh ah ah. Good job. <laughs> Uh, we repeat these poses, holding for about a second each, around 10 times, so that we can get a nice stretch in our wrists and hopefully take care of ourselves so that we don't get arthritis or uh, 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 carpal tunnel syndrome or any other horrible stuff that can happen to our hands. Our hands that do so much for us. So let's take care of them a little, huh? It's also a good time if you're looking at screens to just close your eyes to take a break. Also to drink water. Make sure that you're staying hydrated. Hopefully you've been drinking water more often than just every hour. Uh, and also to punch your microphone. Or think of something you're grateful for. Hmm. I'm grateful for paint. Paint is good. I really do love it. <laughs> Jake says, I'm eating water too. Watermelon. Oh, brag about it. That's awesome. I want some watermelon now. Darn you, Jake. But uh, watermelon's been really good this year, at least to, to us. We've gotten some really good ones. All right, when we're done, we gently shake out our hands to loosen them back up. Woo, 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 woo. And then roll the shoulders a little bit to loosen those up. And then I like to do some neck stretches where we put our ear as high as we can on one side. And then we flop on over to the other side. Woo. Just hold for a little bit. Man, my neck is sore. And then again. And then again. Ow. Yeah, that side needs it. And then uh, we look as far as we can comfortably to one side. And then we look over to the other side. 
And I'm looking at my sourdough right now. Yum. And then the other side again. <laughs> and then the other side again. Yum. Oh, good job, everybody. Good job. Claps for you. Claps for you. And then let's get the music back. How dare you, Spotify. Man, maybe I need like to find a different way. Anyways, uh, Anthony Jackson says, quite the workout. <laughs> I'm sweating. So, no, not from that, but just heat. <laughs> it's true. It's been ridiculously hot for so long for so many people. And I feel like... Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Uh, I want it to be cooler. Okay. I feel like we lost some of the light. It's a bit dark here, but here, let's get a close up view. Look at that guy. Look at that texture. Look at those little flowers. Can you tell which foot was painted afterward? <laughs> okay. So, uh, when we're coming in here with pencils, we've got all sorts of color options for us. Well, first of all, make sure that our paints don't dry. And then uh, I've got some of my favorite colored pencils in here. This one has a random cap on it from the spray bottle, in fact. Uh -huh, look at that. Now it's capped. Ooh. All right. So uh, I think I want to come in here and just start doodling around a little bit to loosen up. This is just where I like start making little marks that are a little haphazard. I like doing that, especially with grassy things because uh that vertical striation is what makes it feel like grass and so if we come in here even with like really messy marks it still feels more grass like because we're adding more vertical lines This is another opportunity again to be like, oh, I don't feel like this area is that interesting compared to the other ones. And then you can add more mark making and it, suddenly it is just as interesting, if not more. So that's, is it pink? Oh, and while we're at it, a little blushy. Obviously, you gotta have your blush. Gotta have it pops. And then a little snoot pinkness. Uh, and then with the face of the alpaca, I think I'll use black. This is just a Prismacolor black. Noir. Oh, there we go. Huh? Huh? Yes. Uh, and I'll put, no, should I do it with a, uh, let's try it with a brown first. And if we want to go darker, then we'll get the black. Yeah, I think I want to go darker than that. Um, actually, the purple seems to be a good option when I go for dark. This is a purple watercolor pencil. And then a little nose and line down for like a, a snoot. Snoot definition, you know? Snoot doggy dog. And then a little bit of ear. Oh yeah, actually I like to do a little line for the ears like that. And then we were talking about having brown come down from the top. Let's see how that, oh, is this the right brown? Ooh, I dropped it. Gradient. Like that. What do you think? Something like that? You could have the back of the neck too, kind of gradiate towards white. Oh, Jocelyn. Is that enough? That's my question. It's very light, very subtle. Do we want more? I want more. I want to be where the alpacas are. I want to add, add some orange to the brown. Strolling along and I see an alpaca and I think it needs some orange on its back. It would be so much better like that. Eh? Is it? Is it better? I'm not sure. Okay. 
It's different. I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's also do the ears like the, the brown orange, just so that it doesn't feel like these dissociated uh, white ears. I want it to all be well acquainted with each other. Yeah. Okay. I actually do like that. Um, one thing that I did do on the previous alpaca is I gave it like a little shadow underneath its little fringe hair. <laughs> I also added a lot of um, different little marks for the fur, making it like wavy. See that? I decided I really don't like the blue on here because it reminds me of veins. So sorry if I ruined that for you, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, let's do some pink wavy lines on here. Woo! Oh, cute. Okay, it's very subtle, so again, I'll just, I'll show you when I'm done. And I kind of want these to be more irregularly spaced, so they're not super, just like the same width from each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, I'm going to be watching uh, Sandman with some friends tonight. Has anybody seen it? And no spoilers. How's it going? For you do you like it i hope everybody's liking it i really want good meal game and stuff and i'm probably gonna come in here with a few colors and do this so it's not just the pink it's it's all the things because that's what i like i like color Now it looks more like bangs. See? All those little wavies. Okay. What else? Oh, okay. I'm going to go in with some darker. Uh, this is the purple again. Some of those vertical lines. But I also think we should go in here and do a few clovery kind of things. Which to me, again, is just a little Y. Hello, Hong Kong. Um, Ys, just like those little fish that I did before. That's the same thing. Just making little Ys. <laughs> Tell me why. Uh, Ren says it's so good, Anna. Oh, I'm so glad. I feel like it could have been a little bit more detail slash been a little longer per episode, but given the times that they worked with, I think they did an excellent job. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, you're saying it's so good, the show. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh, Jake says, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, Sandman, the new, I believe it's on Netflix. Alessandra says, I'm making some stickers right now. I'm going to be part of an arts market this Saturday. Oh, that's so cool. <gasps> First one since pandemic. Oh, man. Well, I hope that you uh, have a ton of fun and sell everything you possibly can. And Jake says, oh, cool. Yeah, I want to watch that. <laughs> and my phone's going off because my family's talking about how cute my niece is. <laughs> Uh, cute. Okay, anyways. <laughs> beep, beep. So yeah, these are the little whys. Do you see? Tell me why. Because I want to add some more detail. Tell me why you make it feel like a field, yeah. Of greenery. It's got a bunch of different plants. Uh, and I could do that with any color, but I, I chose to do purple because it's darker than the green and it shows up well. Uh, another thing that shows up well, actually, actually, is this. I have some dried paint on my finger. Ignore me. Um, what is this? Stedler 7B pencil. You see that? Wow. Well. That is what I used over here to do some of these vertical lines. So it kind of created a, a shadow-ish effect under here because it's so dark. So I like that. I'm going to add more of it. I also really like in my previous one that I did, um, well, when I did the back legs, the way I separated them from the front legs, 
was to basically just do these vertical lines, but with the purple pencil. So it added this effect of being darker without being completely filled in with a different color. So that's a hot tip. If you want to make something look separated, you don't necessarily need to make it realistically shadowed or anything like that. All you need to do is treat it differently. So like a slightly darker colored pencil with vertical lines can do the trick. I'll show you up close what I mean. See that? See the vertical lines? Do you see? I also put a little bit of vertical line edge down here just to kind of have it gradiate tiniest bit to up here. So it's like it gets darker as it goes down. Also the little shadow under here, I added some. More visual detail, so fun. And then um, I think I'll add some stems under some of these guys with little Y's on them as well, which are just like little petals on the stem, that kind of thing. Not all of them, and they don't all need to be perfect or put in there even. They could just be like implied little, little guys. Tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache. What's your favorite Backstreet Boys song? I don't know that I have one, but I do remember getting the album Millennium given to me as a birthday present, and I watched, or I watched it. I listened to it five million times. You know what I did watch a million times was um, I got this DVD of No Doubt making all of their music videos. That was back in like the rock steady phase, I think. Uh, but it went back several, several years. So it was even like, um, was it trapped in a box, I think? That old of music had like the behind the scenes for the music videos on that one DVD. I think It's My Life was one of my favorite ones like old school murder mystery kind of vibes. Really love that. Oh, it's my life. Don't you forget. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you see how much depth that adds? Just depth. <laughs> Having the dark and the light. That's so fun. I enjoy much. My drawing on camera? I don't even know. Okay, zoop, zoop, zoop. Just a few little leafies, little leafy friends. Honestly, sometimes the faster you do this stuff, the more fun it comes out. Like it's all wonky and weird instead of being this like, oh yeah, that's what's expected. It's like, mm, well, unexpected. How about that? And again, for like a crowd like this, I don't need every one of them to have a stem. So I'm just kind of like zooping them. Plus it's towards the edge of the page, so really who cares? <laughs> really and truly, I mean this with gusto. Who cares? Alright. Jake says, I love this alpaca. Alessandra says, I've been working hard in a lol. My sweat is sweating in this 95 plus weather. I am so sorry, but also I am so proud of you for putting your all into this. I feel like uh, it is something that you can really sink a lot of time and effort into going to any kind of selling spot, <laughs> selling your wares. Uh, and I wish you all the dang luck, seriously. Uh, because it's, it's such a huge thing to put yourself out there and to also literally put that much time into something. I know exactly the type of effort it takes. So I applaud you. Literally. <laughs> Rin says, lol, my sweat is sweating. Mood. Bold choice, Anna. <laughs> Do you see what I see? A line, a line between another line. <laughs> <laughs> they are all poised so perfectly. They are all poised so perfectly. Wow, well, I went high. Uh, loving all the texture. Jake says, no, you're drawing on paper. <laughs> Zuzu says, I want it that way is forever a classic. I mean, I want it. Wow, that was not the right tune or like note. 
want, I want it that way. Tell me why. Okay, sorry, I can't stop. Won't stop. Hi, Anna and everyone. I'm painting along. Need this traditional art practice for so long. My gouache is getting sticky since the last time I picked them up. That, that is, they are want to do that. Good reminder to spray my paint to make sure it doesn't dry up on me. But yeah, uh, I think we all need reminders to get back to the traditional art. It's very easy to pick up the, you know, the tools for digital art. It's a lot harder to get through the friction that is getting to your traditional art. <laughs> so good job. Good job doing it. Also, thank you guys for watching the streams because seriously, this allows me to make time to do this kind of stuff. I always want to view the streams as doing something that I want to do. So that's this. Hey, welcome. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Rin says, I know it's, fr I know it from experience, but still so amazing. Oh wait, sorry. It's so amazing to me how your skills are so consistent between traditional and digital media. That's really kind of you to say. Uh, I don't always feel the same. So I think that, um, that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's definitely something that takes a lot of practice always. Like anything traditional, I feel like, um, it's kind of like when I used to go, uh, figure drawing. I haven't done that in so long and I'm very worried about when I do go back and try to do that, <laughs> what's going to come out. Um, but yeah, the idea of drawing well <laughs> completely goes out the window when you go to figure drawing. It's like, oh, oh no, I'm horrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to you, I'm not just being humble. It's literally like, oh, my hands can't do the things I want them to. And so, yeah, when that happens, the only thing that fixes it or makes you, you know, not feel that way is drawing more figures, like doing that consistently and more often. Um, and the second you stop doing it, it just starts ebbing out of your hand and your brain. Uh, I, at least that's by, been my experience is like, oh, every time I go back, I'm back to like, not a good place with it, which is totally fine. I don't mean that to say like, a, it's like a downer. It's much more of a like, oh, I just need to work on this again, because I haven't been putting my skill points into that area at all. Um, so of course it goes away, but it's, it's something that I'm always surprised by the level of where you're like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, but yeah, with the tr traditional artwork, I definitely feel like I've been getting better at achieving what I want to achieve, which is not to say that it's like the apex of all traditional art, which I mean, come on, are we all aiming for that? No, I don't think so. But, uh, I, I do feel like I'm getting more a feeling of control and joy, which is something that it, not control. I shouldn't say that. Cause like, especially with watercolor, there is no such thing as control, but the feeling that, uh, I, I can roll with what's happening much easier, <laughs> which does come down to mindset sometimes rather than like, you know, it's not that I always create what I want to create. It's that I'm okay with what I create. There's a difference there. Okay. So with this, let's just lean on an old design because I can't brain right now. So that old design that we found earlier, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, this guy. Let's just do this guy. All right, so in the corners, we've got little starbursts. You guys can't see this, but I can. Maybe I, I switched to purple. Gotta do the sound effects also. These are like little, little bird feet, cute. All right, and then that determines the edge. So we go here. There's like a little border and here. You can see that? Okay. Joop. Mm, I might skip to the inner part. Do I? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go two layers of lines here. And then I'm going to do these leafy guys. And then the big... What do you call that? Diamond. There we go. And then a starburst on its back like that. Tell me why I can't, so don't ask me. 
And then right here, I almost feel like I should do a little bit of that. A little bit of la 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 la. A little bit of Lexus. Time to rewatch Shit's Creek. It's so good. Okay. So we've got our design here. Uh, now I want to choose whether I paint certain areas or I, I mean, honestly, this looks really good. This is like, if we could just transpose this, which I mean, I could, I could cut this out and put it on here. That's a possibility, but um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but that is actually a really fun idea. What if I did a series of alpacas all like this, and then I just did a series of like, pattern textiles and then I collage them together this is gonna be my gallery show you guys oh my gosh <laughs> Jake says I need much more practice that's the only way man sorry to say it's the only way uh also Rin says that scares me a bit with school but I know I need the practice regardless of how I feel about the outcome the biggest like hang up with art school uh or like doing art that you're you're feeling trepidatious about is just that feeling. If you can conquer that feeling, it does not matter what you make. <laughs> so I would highly recommend taking some time to mentally try to figure out how to deal with the fear uh, and deal with the apprehension because you cannot let it hold you back. That is like a must. I won't let it hold you back, Rin. <laughs> I won't. But um yeah, if you can master your mind, you can master any kind of art form. Because literally all that art takes is time. And the only thing in your way is your brain. <laughs> and uh, I do think that there should be therapists or like medical psychology people who just study artists and just help them. Because seriously, it's a very, very unique thing that we all go through when creating. Uh, and it's, it's worth paying attention to. I'm thinking, yeah, this inner area on this one is like a light green with the dark green foliage on it. Unto the breach, dear friends. Here we go. Here we go. I couldn't even go that high. Here we go. There we go. I'm a Mario. Mamma mia. Okay, so now that we've got this green, what's our next area? This line could be yellow. Oh, the outer part could be a green as well. Do I want that? Do I want that? It's a lot of green, but also pretty. I want to keep some of it orange. What if we did this line as white and we're going to have border of colored pencil on it? And then we do orange as these guys like backgrounds and then the yellow starbursts. I think that works. Hey, if it doesn't, we can always paint over it. <laughs> How about that? Mm -mm, too much water. Always have a paper towel near you. Always, always. Whoops, very thick, but don't worry about it. Y'all can see that? Yeah. All right, I'm digging it. I am digging it. Uh, <laughs> Dina says art is therapy for me. Absolutely. I think art can be therapy. I, I am specifically talking about people who are like wanting to make a living at it slash make it, uh, for a very different purpose than people who use it for expression. Yes. It's also a form of expression for people who make money from it, but when you have to make it and you don't want to, that's when you need to like be able to push through some stuff <laughs> and have techniques. 
which is the whole point of like therapy and stuff. <laughs> uh, Robin says, oh wait, here, let's get there. back to the rin. Let's see. Oh my gosh, you guys, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> Ooh, Robin says, I want to see a little clay alpaca with a tiny woven blanket. That is so cute. I love it. Ugh. <laughs> Alessandra says, also, you're making the songs uh, stay stuck in my head. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> Rin says, thank you so much for the advice, friends. And I, it's, uh, I'm, I'm less afraid now than I used to be. I just know there will be anxiety, but I'll figure out how to push through it. That's exactly it. Yeah, there's going to be fear. There's going to be times that you don't feel like drawing. It's all about just having the tools to deal with that. Zuzu says, quote, the worst thing that can happen is a feeling. <laughs> Dang, ain't that just the truth? Um, Alessandra says, and yeah, that's what I do, and I'm an art therapist. Oh, I know. I know all about it. Rand says, uh, there are also resources on campus for helping with mental health and neurodivergence. Oh, I love that, thankfully. Uh, so it, if it comes to that, I know they're there to help me through it. That is awesome. Rand says, friends, thank you. I appreciate the kind words of encouragement. You know, you're going to do great. It's going to be awesome. You're going to have the time of your life. Jacuzzi, hello, says Yama. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I speak the language that you're speaking, but also uh, if Yama is Lama or Lama Yama. <laughs> yes, but also alpaca. <laughs> but honestly, who's keeping track? <laughs> uh, Robin says, you're doing great, Rin. Keep arting and seek help when you need it. Absolutely. Uh, it's a thing for all of you guys. Use art as therapy, get art, uh, get therapy for art. <laughs> Robin says, do you ever do 3D art, Anna? Um, <laughs> that's very sweet, Jake. Jake says, I'm convinced that Anna can make adorable artwork in any medium. That's very nice. Uh, I can try. I can try. Uh, but yeah, the thing that Robin asked, do you ever do 3D art? Uh, not 3D as in programs, but I do sculpt from time to time. Do you guys want to see something I sculpted not too long ago? They are not completely done. I still want to, actually, maybe we could do that. <laughs> Let's do it together. Uh, Cause I painted these with the same acrylic gouache. So uh, they are little rock friends. Oh golly, it's so dark, you can't see. So this is the littlest rock. And then this is the medium rock. See, it's got little eyes <laughs> and little mossy bits on the top and the bottom. And then we've got the big hulking rock. Oh, hello, hello there. And the thing I did is I put magnets inside of them. So they stick together. There we go, that's the way. This is the way. And then, oh. <laughs> uh, doesn't want this turn that way. There we go. So yeah, they can stick together in different combinations. And uh, let's see if this guy is that way, then this guy is that way. There we go. This is more of the intended. Boom. <laughs> They're just so fun. Uh, but I, what I want to do with them is um, I think I want to put like a little yellow around their eyes just to make it like a colored eye rather than just a black eye. I don't know. There's something about it that I, I kind of feel like I want it to be one layer more with the eyeballs. But other than that, I really like them. And I need to put, uh, what do you call it, finish on them so that they don't get scuffed up like this guy is. <laughs> but they've been sitting in a drawer for a while, and so I felt like, I don't know, I'll get back to them when I get back to them. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh, you guys, all the rock puns. <laughs> I love it. Ren says, um, yes, of course we do. <laughs> Dem eyes. Aw, so cute. Oh my gosh. I love those rocks. That's awesome, says Jake. They rock. <laughs> Dina says, oh, they're cute. Alessandra says, oh, rocks my world, lol. <laughs> Y'all trying to top each other with those puns. Oh my gosh. Dina says, they're your pet rocks. Exactly. And Rin says, love how they stick. Wait, are they magnetic? What? Yes, they are magnetic. I have little magnets, like little round ones that I, I used to make uh, clay magnets and clay pins much more often. And so yeah, I got a bunch of magnets. I have 5 million, actually, and they're very strong. <laughs> 
So uh, I want to use them for things like this. And I want to keep making magnets uh, and pins. I just have been waiting to feel that itch <laughs> as I scratch myself. <laughs> so um, I think that that's, that's probably on the horizon, honestly, because I, I keep seeing other makers making stuff and I'm like, I should go back to that. That's fun. <laughs> hey. Sultan says, hi, how are you? I am just dandy. How are you doing today? Alessandra says, what? That's so cool. <laughs> Robin says, magnet show. <laughs> some of my uh, old school patrons actually have some magnets from me. So that was back in the day. I, I could offer some physical goodies. And man, I love doing that. I'm going to do like what we said before with the little vertical lines to kind of push this back. Kind of worked. Uh, okay. So if we are... 15 minutes out. Let's see how much we can get done. Uh, this guy's still drying, so I'm going to jump back to our arowana, one of them. I'm going to bust out some more blue. And we've got plenty of white still, so we're going to... Oh, I'm going to splotch it. Where's my... Is this guy clean? Yeah, just a little wet. All right. Arowana. Arowana, mana mana, uh, arowana, mana mana. Now I use this brush, but I want to make sure that I'm not too clingy to the edges, so I'm going to be kind of loosey goosey with it. Just loosey goosey. I forgot this this paper acts totally differently than the other one. Oh, and I'm also off. So um, it's going to not let me get that close anyway, so <laughs> I don't need to worry about loosening up. I'm gonna mix some more of this blue in. Whoop. Oh yeah, juicy baby. I love it when it's juicy. Honestly, that's like the big difference for me between gouache and acrylic gouache is how juicy it is. Now, partially that's probably because I'm using gouaches that are used from another person. Thanks, Julia, again. <laughs> and uh, so they are a little bit drier than the new stuff that is the acrylic wash. So I can't blame it all on the paints. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so fun. See, this is what you want to get excited about a piece as you're painting it. Like, look at these colors. Hot dang. That is some striking contrast. Yes. Should I leave a border? What do you think? A border of yellow? I probably can't with how close the tail is over here. But all those decisions kind of make the piece, so it's fun to kind of make them on the fly and see how they differ from other pieces that you've made. I wonder if I always planned to put a border on a piece, if I would just have a little bit more ability to like crop in or out during painting, because Sometimes stuff like this happens where I just like, I reach an edge because of my design and I'm like, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> Again, spending a little bit more time in that sketch phase would definitely help. So if you're planning on uh, doing some traditional work, my advice to you is spend a little bit more time in the sketch phase just to make sure you're not like painting off the edge or, uh, placing it in a way that's like slightly tilted, <laughs> which is what I find myself doing sometimes. It's fine. A paint gets on my desk. It's already there. <laughs> I could put something down, but that would take away from the fun. <laughs> Do you want to arowana? <laughs> Jake says, I just realized arowanas have front fins too. They're usually just folded against their body, at least in photos. Love that contrast. Things generally are a little tilted. <laughs> just, you know, in general. 
they're just tilted. The world is tilted. It's fine. These guys, again, whenever I'm painting on stream, I'm trying to just do it like as a thing that I want to do. So I'm not as concerned with like the quality of uh, the tilt or whatever. Like if I were to make something actually for a gallery, I would be much more concerned about that kind of stuff. But I'd probably already have done like seven tests before I make a final piece, honestly. If I were doing it for something other than myself. Although, uh, I know that I'm getting closer and closer. Our goal is to open the online store by the end of this month. So, um, I will either this time or next time I do an update on the store, I will have some originals for sale. And a lot of them will be like these guys where it's like a little one-off study kind of thing. Like I view it as a study, but somebody else might get joy out of owning it. Uh, I just have so many of those in my possession that I'm like, you know, they don't all need to live here. Oh, whoops, a little bit too much blue. Another thing though that I love about like if I accidentally have too much of one color or something like that, I usually at the end of my painting session get like, oh, I don't want to paint anymore. And so I, um, if I have that extra paint, I'll just put it down on a random piece of paper in like a random shape or something. And then the next time I come back to paint, there's like a start of something. And it's really fun to just be like, oh yeah, what could this be? And if nothing else, it's like a mark that I can make maybe a digital brush out of or a uh, collage something out of. There are possibilities everywhere. Endless, baby! I really like this uh, yellow black backdrop, how it's coming out. Especially there's this little spot right next to the tail. Do you see that? Where like the orange kind of faded to the yellow. And I really enjoy that. Things that are not planned, but are wonderful anyway. Maybe in the background of the water, I could use like a blue um, colored pencil or something and create like some wavy lines to kind of guide the eye through. That'd be fun. I love this so far. Arowana. Coming in clutch. <laughs> oh, man. Alessandra says, the world is a little tilted. Quote of the day by Anna. <laughs> you know, it's very tilted. <laughs> and Tina says, should have had a V8. <laughs> Jake says, I also love this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to this guy. Not loving this as much, but you know, we're going to figure our way out of it. Interesting how, how different things can be. <laughs> Wait, why is it blurry? Come on, focus on me. Focus. Focus. Okay. Oh, Anthony and mom, they're texting. They're texting up a storm. Okay, so uh, let's get a little bit of the scarlet up in here, up in here. I've still got the blue on the brush, so that might make some happy ap accidents happen. This down here. Get a little dry brushing on there. So cool. So I'm going to have to study uh, what Jake was talking about, where it's like they actually have fins up front, but they're usually folded down. I want to know more about that. And I also really want to see one in the wild now that you're talking about it. Okay, that's better. I don't love the pink, but we can always draw and paint over that like a ton. Um, I'm thinking we'll get some blue and some green together to make a beautiful plant color for this, the, the vertical plants that we got going on here. Advertisement so sad about. No! Haha, <laughs> I win. Okay, so uh, let's get up in here. We've got this green that's lovely and has been keeping warm with our water spritzings. So always remember to spritz with water. 
And we just need some blue. Oh yeah. And it's like this lovely blue-green. You guys can see that? Yeah, that's a good color. I like it. And it'll stand out nicely on this blue, the lighter blue. So I'm gonna make this one go in front. I'm gonna be kind of willy-nilly with the shapes. Like that. Oh, so willy-nilly. Wow. <laughs> and then uh, we'll do the other ones behind. And we can even mix a little bit more blue in to make them kind of a dip different depth. At least that's my thought. What do you guys think? I don't know. Let's make this one a little bit longer and wavier. I like that. Okay, so if we add a little bit more blue, a little bit more white, then it'll just get closer to that color in the background, which is cool. That's another reason to have like a little bit of excess of your other colors, uh, or an advantage of it, I should say, uh, is that if you're mixing in, then that's your mix in. It's just sitting right there. It's ready to go. Now that we're streaming once a week, I need to ask you guys, what are your weekend plans earlier? <laughs> I think we might be getting together for my mom's birthday this weekend, possibly. Uh, like I said before, like my mom's birthday was a while ago, <laughs> but we haven't gotten the chance to get together as a whole group. And so what we're doing is hopefully making it this weekend, but we shall see. That's another incentive for me to get that painting done. There's always the possibility that I'll feel up to film it. So uh, if I do a secret stream, I'll post about that on the Discord. But I'm not guaranteed. <laughs> I just dropped the brush. What did I get paint on? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so it looks like a little bit of carpet, a little bit of the, what do you call it? The flat files. Is any on me? I don't know. I don't think so, honestly. Did I dodge myself? Wow. Another reason to always have <laughs> a paper towel on hand. Just gonna dip it in a little water. Get that off the carpet. Sorry, one second of silence is worth it for my carpet. <laughs> I rent, people, I rent. and then blot it. <laughs> all right, got it. Oh yeah, much better. Woo, all right, crisis averted. Good job, everybody. Thanks for holding out. <laughs> Rand says, just the wall behind Anna slowly becomes a splatter board. <laughs> That would be amazing uh, if if I could do that in a way that's like artistic. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Jake says just paint the whole carpet. They'll never know, especially in acrylic. Oh my gosh, that won't be crunchy weirdness. I redid the floors for you. Are you happy? Give me money. Oh, now all the paint's off the brush because we put it on the carpet. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what I was saying, so there's that. Oh, I think I was talking about mom's painting, and uh, I was gonna, with emphasis, <laughs> emphasis, say that uh, I don't guarantee painting everything on stream, just because, like, a lot of times when I decide to do something, it's, like, either late at night or, um, 
or it just is like an inopportune time to turn on a camera. Like say I, uh, I am like curling up on the couch and I'm like, I can't set up a whole camera feed curled up on the couch. So that's, that's just where I'm at. Someday when we all have uh, drones that hover around us streaming every single thing we do ever in a day, then I could stream it. Lovely. All right, I might do even one more back here just to fill in that kind of gap. And we're going to add even more of the light blue so that it's really getting close to that background color. Fading back into the distance. Uh, Robin says, thanks for the nightmare, Anna. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome for nightmares. Now, come to think of it, I could think of something even worse. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting better and better at uh, painting the seaweed the way I want it to be painted, so... That's another reason to do studies of things, is just, you know, you get information just from doing. And also the joy of finding something that's like, oh yeah, that's what I wanted. It's a privilege to get to paint something more than once. Man, it's a privilege just to paint. I'm so happy I get to do this. Yeah, yeah, do you guys see that? Oh, sorry, I'm like completely off camera. All right, check that out. Sorry, I'm in my own world. <laughs> All right, so if we can work out that pink body into something cute, I think this would be a really strong one. Um, I can also add little, little guppies along with it if I so choose later. This guy's kind of like sharper and a little bit more stylized. Hey, I just realized these are like primary colors. Yellow, blue, red. That's awesome. And this guy's finally dry and we're at time. So what should we do as the last thing? Um, not this guy. Okay, so it's between these two. I think we should do some work on the alpaca just because he's really close. He's really close. I'm thinking yellow and some pencils. Yeah, I think yellow and some pencils and we're good. Everybody remember to drink water. Not your paint water, just water, water. Water, 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 water. <laughs> Thank you so much, Moz, for doing a whole link wall and everything. You're amazing. Also, uh, if you want to support the mods or just check out their work in any way, I highly recommend checking out the links in the description. So uh, thank you for checking that out. Also, mods, you're amazing. <laughs> just a little for you. Okay, uh, I'm going to put the, the yellow that we're almost out of on here and we're gonna mix it with some white i've learned that white is uh kind of a opacity enhancer so if you want something to show up on top of another color usually adding white is a good idea we're gonna go with our liner and just mix up a little batch a lot more yellow whoops that got some blue in it stay away Stay away, get away, get away, stay away. All right, yeah, that's a good yellow. Come on. Front stage, all right. Nice and thick. Feeling great. Life moves slow on the ocean floor. Feeling great. I can't feel the waves anymore. What? 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that. Look at that brightness. Oh, wow. We love to see it. Oh yeah. All right, now just make the shapes good, Anna. Okay, 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 okay. Zoop, zoop, zoop. And just a little bloop, bloop. Yoink, yoink. Okay, okay. We're getting there. I gotta put myself up to get like confident enough to do this because it's a, uh, it's a little nerve wracking, just a little bit. Don't know exactly why, but it is. Zoop. Could we do like little dots? I think I think that would. Uh, should it be that or like little dashes or little triangles? What should it be? Lose yourself to the yellow. You know it's not mellow. You better never let it glow, glow. Whoa. Oh, uh, speaking of which, just a reminder to pop in on uh, Friday. I believe it's 2 p.m. Pacific. Or was it 2.30? Oh, golly. Uh, check out Behance <laughs> to find the uh, event. And uh, come on Friday to see how to use the soft light layers. Sorry, soft light blend mode <laughs> in layers to great effect in three different use cases. So if you've ever been curious. Also afterward, the cool thing about pro tips is that afterward the uh, host or presenter or whatever goes to Discord and we talk for a half hour afterwards. So it's a half hour show, half hour Discord. So if you wanna be a part of that Discord, it's gonna be the Photoshop server and it'll be in the voice channel. So I will be there to chit chat it up. And if we don't have like 5 million questions about uh, soft light, then we can just chat about art and stuff. Feel free, bring your questions. I think I'll do dots, at least just right here. We should we do these? Hmm, no. Kind of want this to be bigger, a bigger starburst. What's your guys' favorite like fruity candies? I guess Starburst is in there. Although Starburst is probably just like sugar. But ain't that just all candy? Whoa. By the way, oh, I have uh, I have news of the outside world. So we got ice cream for the first time in like two years from a store. Uh, sorry, I mean, not like an ice cream, like you get it by the scoop, but like an actual gallon of ice cream. And it was Tillamook and it was vanilla. And I have to say, underwhelming. I'm so sorry, Tillamook. Usually I love you, but uh, it's been a long time since I've had uh, ice cream, like in general, I guess. That's not my own, but it's just... It was over, or underwhelming, and I feel bad about that, but uh, I also feel good about it because that means that my ice cream is awesome, and I'm like, yes, 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 that's what I want to hear. I might put a few yellow flowers throughout. I think that it calls for it a little bit, and I have more yellow left, so why not? I think I'll do, should I mimic these shapes? Make them like a three. You guys, uh, can you see that? Can you see? Can you say it? <laughs> Old school Grace Helbig callback. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like them. A bit finicky, but I like them. Ain't that just the best people too? A little finicky, but I like them. That's Anthony to a T. Also, what should we do for the Halloween special this year? If Ryan's throwing that. But throw out your ideas. I know we had like a million ideas after last year's special. Uh, that we had right after we had made the one that we made. <laughs> so it was like, oh, next year we should do this. 
Oh my gosh, that one was so messy. What are you doing? Trying to live my life. It's okay, I'll balance it out with some cuties. Also, Jake said Mike and Ike's. That's your favorite candy? Oh my gosh. Or favorite fruity candy, I suppose. All time favorite candy? What is it? I need to know. Oh, I said my favorite candy was chocolate. Do you guys accept that as an answer? But I don't want like Hershey's chocolate. I want like good quality chocolate. That's not what I'm gonna get on Halloween. Nobody hands out like good quality chocolate on Halloween. Can I get a uh, Goutard uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips please in my bag? Thank you. They'd throw that kid out. I feel like I was thrown out. The last time I went trick-or-treating, I remember I was taking my younger brother, but I was also dressed up. And one of my neighbors said, you're too old. I was like, get out of my life. Why you gotta be so rude? Anyways, the moral of the story is uh, love what you love and don't take your neighbor's advice of being too old <laughs> you're never too old for anything just do the thing okay look at those little yellow flowers oh they're so cute <laughs> Ooh, alessandra says i love chocolate especially european chocolate Ooh, so fancy <laughs> AJ says, whoa, no control Z, just got here. Hey, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, we are nearing the end of the stream, but also, uh, yeah, we just made a little addition that I'm very happy about. I'm also going to draw with colored pencil on here and then we could call it good. Sound good? Sound good. And mods, you do not have to stick around. You can always vominos. It's all good. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, again, check out the mods links in the description. And then check out uh, uh, ideas for Halloween. <laughs> Tell me what you're gonna be. Whoa, that was dark. It was like not dark and then it was. I'm pressing pretty hard, so. Just trying to get it to like show up on that white even a little bit. White is powerful. Ugh. I guess. In paint, I mean. Uh, and then, should we do anything with the white? Maybe, um, it's a little too... Uh, it's calling too much attention to itself. I might... Hmm, what should I do? I'll come back to it, maybe. I might change the white. It's a possibility. But anything's a possibility. With acrylic gouache, you can go over it and over and over it. It's fine. You guys want some ASMR of drawing? <laughs> I don't know if that's very ASMR-y. And then I want these guys to jump out. Like, huzzah! Something like that. And then... We could do a border on this. And more of a border here, I think. Vroom vroom car. Vroom vroom indeed. What if we tried... Mm, no, it doesn't really show up on top of the white for some reason. So I think what I'm going to do is paint on top of that with this cream. And then, then, then we'll call it good. <laughs> Does that sound good? I think it'll have to. Is that creamy enough? Hmm. Here, yeah, see? What you gotta do is add a little oxide yellow. Yeah, see? I'm coming up. I want the world to know. Got to let it show. Okay, here we go. 
that's creamier. I'll show you in the close-up in a second. It definitely makes a difference. Although I'm sure it's hard to tell on camera. Mm -hmm. So close, so close. We're getting there, people. Okay. So if you see it up close, it's much more cream and less of that stark white. So that helps me out. And then I think I might either draw or paint on top of it, like some kind of little pattern possibly, maybe like a red. Uh, but anyways, that is it. That is what we're gonna call it today. Um, I'm gonna, okay, I just said that. And yet I do wanna do one thing before we go. I want to use the excess paint that we have in here. So we've got some yellow and some blue green and some blue and some white. So like I said before, I like to just um, use excess paint at the end so that it is used. First of all, I don't want it to dry on the palette. Oh, this one already did. It looks like no, it's my brush. My brush is just stiff. <laughs> um, and so I want to like leave something for myself. It can be random little doodads or whatever. Uh, it's just using the paint. That's the most important part. What I'm going to do is add a little white to this. Actually a lot of white, the rest of the white. And then we'll have this color. We'll just go. And then I'm going to wash it out, go back in with the blue. Actually, I should probably do white or yellow first, sorry, because it's so light. I don't want to paint on top with it. Oof. Okay. I'm going to do a dip and I'm going to do a dip. There we go. And then, and then, maybe I use a little bit of yellow. Mix it, mix it up, baby. Ooh, that's a nice green. This is all just random, by the way. No rhyme or reason, just trying it out. And then the blue. A little bit of water. Can you see anything in this abstract? What could it be? There we go. All right, so uh, next time I come back to this, I can either use this for something or I could cut it out and use it for another thing. You know, there are just endless possibilities. So uh, the most important thing is I used up all my paint and look at what we made today. So we've got this alpaca friend, which I absolutely love. Uh, we've got this start to an arowana friend, which I will definitely finish. Just need a little more time. Uh, and then we've got the other arowana friend right here that we will also finish at some point. <laughs> but I had a ton of fun. I hope that this uh, maybe inspired you to try something new, try out a different medium than you're used to doing, uh, or getting paint on your carpet, like whatever, whatever floats your boat, really. <laughs> uh, Jake says, rainy ci cityscape. Ooh, this is a rainy cityscape. I could totally see that. I like it. Uh, Jake says, you did so much awesome work today, Anna. Thank you. That is really nice. Alessandra says, love all of them. That is also very nice. Thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, I hope that, Alessandra, you sell everything you possibly could at the art, the art gathering, whatever pop-up thingy it is. Um, also, we will be on the Discord after this. So uh, if you want to chit chat or show off your work, I am happy to have that on the Discord. It's so fun to see what you guys make. And I will see you again very soon. Actually on Friday. Remember, Friday, uh, I've got pro tips. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come support. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.
And now it's the after show. I am Anna of the after show. Alessandra says, check out my stickers. I will. I have to check them out on Discord. Uh, I will be there in a moment after the after show. And uh, Rin says, hello, Anna of the after show. (laughs) And Jake says, ha. (laughs) Well, you make a funny voice then. I want you to say alpaca painting. Alpaca painting. Alpaca painting. Alpaca painting. Alpaca painting. This is exactly what the uh, the voice actors do. You know, the real ones. <laughs> Kendall says, Llama alpaca. <laughs> Jake says, I'm saying it. <laughs> I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> I love the idea that multiple people all over the world are just like saying quietly to themselves, alpaca painting. This is like Anthony. Did I ever tell you that story? Anthony would wake up as a kid and he would just whisper to himself, Vaporeon. (laughs) The Pokemon Vaporeon, you know, he loved it. And so he would just whisper that to start the day. And I think we should all take that energy forward. Make this the best day by whispering something nice. (laughs) All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for being here. Bye.